So okay, welcome back to the next part of this video. Uh, we are, we've just agreed that this is not a, val a good approach. Uh, this is a difficult calculation. You're going to have to be very careful when you construct what you need to integrate in order to try and calculate the PDF directly from the joint PDF of this, um, of this um, distribution here. So we're going to instead try and work out the CDF, which is uh, the CDF of this uh, big ran this random variable big T as a function of little t is the probability. Remember that big T is uh, sorry that big T yes is less than or equal to little t. Okay, so let's try and work out what that correspond what event that corresponds to. What we want to know is what is this event? What is this event big T is less than or equal to little t? We'd like to know what that corresponds to in terms of R two region, our R2 region. So this is our uh, our ordered pair X and Y, remember. Uh, so our, we have our abstract probability space. So if I turn back, we had our abstract probability space. We were mapping it onto, uh, we were mapping it onto R2. We we're ascribing each, each, each outcome in here. We were ascribing a uh, value in R2. So uh, what we'd like to do, and we know the probability density function on this, on this, um, space here. So what we'd like to do is work out what um, what this event, big T is less than or equal to little t, is as an event in here. Then if we work out what that probability of that event is in here, then we're, we're done, aren't we? We're, we're in business. Okay, so we want to know what is the event that t is less than or equal to little t in this R2 space. So, uh, we know that uh, big T is equal to little uh, big X over big Y. So we know that uh, if uh, if t, a t value is fixed, if a t value is fixed, then little x over little y is equal to t, and that corresponds to the line y is equal to x over t. So all of these points along a line like that have a value, uh, have a fixed value of t, and in this case, it's going to be a positive value because if you take um, if you take uh, the x value and the y value, they're both positive. So when you divide the x value by the y value, you're going to get a positive value for t, and I'm sorry it's on such a slant. Okay, uh, so now we're saying we want to consider all all values of t together, which are less than or equal to this fixed value. So, if we if we make t smaller, if we make t smaller, if we make this smaller, what's going to happen? As it approaches zero, so firstly let's consider that we're starting off with t as a positive number. So let's consider that t is greater than zero initially. We'll say what happens if uh, t is a negative number later. Okay, so I'll just pull that down a bit. Um, so let's consider t as a positive number. So this is the line uh, where all the value points on here, this is the uh, line corresponding to the event that big T is actually equal to t. So this is the event that big T is actually equal to t. Uh, now we're saying um, we want uh, the event that big T is less than or equal to little t. If we make little t smaller, then this is going to be cut, we're going to be dividing by a smaller number. So it's going to overall make this uh, lines steeper, so it's going to go. Uh, we're going to get all the steeper lines. Basically, all of these steeper lines here are going to uh, be elements of this. Um, or they're all going to be um, elements of this event. So, uh, if I get the blue pen, all of this portion of the of the plane is going to be part of this event that big T is less than or equal uh, to little t. Okay. Uh, so uh, from this line onwards. This is the line, remember, that big T is equal to little t. Right. Now, what happens when t passes zero? When t is equal to zero, okay, we get some sort of flaw there. What number do you divide through uh, to get... Um, what number do you do, ha do you have to make y to get to divide through and get zero? What you can see is it's sort of converging up on a line of infinite gradients. So it's converging up on this line uh, on the vertical y-axis there. Um, whether it's actually equal to it is uh, more difficult. Is it going to be actually equal to it? So that t equals zero. That's the, yes, it is going to be equal. If t is equal to zero, uh, then obviously that implies that x is equal to zero. So that's the line x is equal to zero. Brilliant. So that is in it. I was going to do some speech about how it wouldn't affect the integral, but it's perfect. It's fine. Okay, now that t surpass zero, that t go to the negative numbers. So as t goes negative, then this line is going to have a negative gradient. So you're going to go over to this side. Now initially when t is very, very small but negative, so for instance something like negative 0.001 or something, it's going to be very, very steeply negative, so something like that. 
And then as you get to make T more and more, uh, more and more negative, so something as you let it go to negative infinity, this is going to become uh, much less steep. So it's going to converge down on the line y is equal to zero, but never go past it. So basically, this event, T is less than or equal to T, is going to include all of these points here. So it's going to go over all of those. So this great big blue mess that I've coloured in here, uh, and it looks like, you know, a six-year-old, in fact, worse, a three-year-old uh, crayon disaster. Um, this is our event that t big T is less than or equal to little t. Uh, so that's the event, basically, over which we need to integrate. To work out the probability that T is less than or equal to t, we just need to integrate the the joint PDF over this entire blue region. But firstly, let's consider what happens when t is not a positive, little t is not a positive number. When little t is not a positive number, then you start off, in fact, I'll draw it over here along the side, then you start off with some line that is negative. So this is, this is the starting line, this is the y is equal to x over t, or you correspondingly, the event that big T is equal to little t. Then, you're taking all t values, big t values, less than uh, that, or equal to that little t value. Well, basically, as you make t smaller, it, the exact same thing happen, as happens over here is going to happen. It's just you start off uh, more over this way. Okay, so it's going to go down basically, it's going to go like that, they're going to become uh, less steep as t gets bigger, and as t approaches negative infinity, it's going to converge on this line here. Okay, so the event that uh, t is less than or equal to little t is going to be equal to this. So we've got a nice pattern here of um, how we um, can understand these events, what they are. So you give me any t value, in principle I could draw you out what the event that big t is less than or equal to little t is equal to. Okay, so if I now want to work out what the probability that big T is less than or equal to little t is, what I need to do is do this integral. I need to integrate the joint PDF, so it's going to be a double integral. I need to integrate over this area, over this blue area, so I'll just call this the area A for now. I need to integrate the joint PDF. Uh, so this is the PDF that it's at a specific point, little x, little y, and if I integrate the joint PDF over that area, dx, dy, uh, then uh, we are going to get the probability that big T is less than or equal to little t. Okay, so um, there is, we could try doing this integral in terms of Cartesian coordinates. It's it's not a sensible way to do it. Remember what the PDF looked like. The, the PDF was radially symmetric. The PDF was equal to 1 over 2 pi. It was just the, uh, it was just the two standard normal PDFs multiplied together. Minus x squared plus y squared over the 2. It is, cr it is you know, screaming for you to, um, for you to use, um, for you to use um, the um, polar coordinates. So basically, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer to polar coordinates uh, and integrate over polar coordinates. So I just want to do a quick discussion uh, where we um, discuss uh, a bit of multivariable calculus here, which is what it means to integrate over polar coordinates. So, uh, polar coordinates are r and theta, so instead of labelling each point in the plane with an x value and a y value, instead what we do is we label each point in the plane with its radial distance, so uh, you tell me how far away it is from the origin, that's its radial distance, and you tell me its angle from the x-axis, its theta, and if you tell me those two values, it uniquely specifies uh, the uh, position of a point. Now, what we want to do is we want to integrate uh, with respect to r and with respect to theta. So if you make a, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to sum over this area. But the problem is that if you make a tiny little increment dr, that means, uh, sorry, that's d theta. If you make a tiny little increment dr and you make a tiny little increment d theta, those necess aren't necessarily, if you, the area of the tiny little bit you get isn't necessarily going to equal um, dr times d theta. And let me explain the reason for that. And this is where this stuff about it expanding as you go up uh, becomes important. Okay, so uh, if we think about this, if we're going to increment um, d theta, we're going to increment theta by some tiny amount, then 
how the area which you get, um, so let's say you increment theta by some tiny amount and you increment r by some tiny amount, then the area of that little box is not, it, it's not a constant depend because it's going to depend on where your uh, on your r and your theta value basically because as you get further out as you let r go further and further out like this then for the same dr and the same d theta then the area of that little box there is not the same as the area of the little box there that is not the same as uh, for cartesian coordinates if you consider cartesian coordinates uh, and you consider making a tiny little increment dx and dy then the area of the little box dx dy is utterly the same no matter where you actually make those increments whereas here it's depending uh, on your r value so we need to take account of that when uh, constructing the integral so we want to work out what the area of this box is going to equal and the real problem is that d theta uh, the area of this box is we consider it converging on a rectangle clearly it is just dr the length of this uh, side length here times whatever the length of that side length is there. And what is the length of that? It's not d theta. Well, basically, we consider, to draw another picture, we consider it like a little triangle like that. We consider it converging on being a triangle. And then, if we work in radians, then the um, the uh, length of this, uh, s uh, this uh, sorry, we don't consider it being a triangle. We consider it being an arc. Uh, so if you have a circle, if you can have a the arc of a circle like this and you want to work out what the length of that arc is there it's the radial it's the radius of the circle times theta where theta is in radians the reason being that um, the rad radians are hmm how can I say this okay so if you work in degrees if you think theta in degrees then what you do is you take theta divided by 360 and you want to times that that's the uh, percentage that this um, little sector is of the entire circle uh, so it's theta divided by 360 and then basically you want to times that uh, that uh, proportion by the circumference because the length of that arc is going to be this fraction of the whole circumference and the whole circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. If you work in radians then theta uh, you have theta again and you want to divide it by 2 pi this time because there are 2 pi radians in the whole circle and then you times it by 2 pi r and that's very nice because that just becomes r times theta. So if you work in radians the length of this little arc length here is r times d theta basically and that's the origin of the fact that we need to sum uh, r d theta um, dr rather than just putting d theta dr so when we construct the polar integral when we construct this blue integral uh, using polar coordinates we're going to need to integrate over r and theta and we're going to need to stick in that little correction basically that way of calculating the area so we have um, we have our PDF, we're going to integrate the PDF, so this is going to become 1 over 2 pi e to the negative r squared over 2, and then we get r d theta dr. So basically what we are doing is, if I draw a picture, we're basically going to, um, we're basically saying let theta go round a certain amount and let r go out by a certain amount and work out the area of these little um, little pieces like that and then multiply them by the PDF of that the PDF at that value and the PDF is just given by because it's radially symmetric you just have a radial function so if you put in your radial value this will give you the probability density function you times that by your little area which is r d theta dr where you increment d theta and dr and then you want to vary theta over all uh, all the relevant possibilities and r over all the relevant possibilities so and this is where it becomes important that we know our value t. So let's say uh, that, that we want the event that t is less than or equal to little t. So we now need to work out what we're going to integrate over. So what are our bounds going to be? So it's at the moment this integral is just over uh, this blue region here. Okay. And we'll continue this video in the next part.